Now bring your feet together. We'll loosen up the knees. And change direction. <laughs> and now the ankles. The shayest. Change direction. And now the other foot. And reverse directions. All right, continue with the all season Qigong with the feet hip width apart or heels together if you want to challenge your balance. Interlock your fingers, inhale and exhale. Stretch up, stretch out any tight places and continue deep breathing. Come back to center, inhale, exhale, turn to the side and continue to breathe. Inhale, come back to the front, exhale, turn to the other side. Inhale, come back to the front, one more time to each side. Inhale, come back to the front. Exhale, turn to the side. And inhale, come back to the front. Take a wrist, stretch up, exhale and bend. Inhale, come back to center. Change to the other wrist, stretch up, exhale and bend. Inhale, come back to center. One more time to each side. Inhale, come back to center and stretch up, exhale and bend. Inhale, come back to center. Now exhale, bend your waist, move your hips around to loosen your lower back. And squat down with feet flat if you can. And lift up your heels. And we'll come back up. Now we'll loosen up the shoulders. So bring your shoulders forward and inhale. Roll them to the back and exhale. And continue rotating your shoulders while I adjust the temperature in the room.
And stop with your shoulders in the back. Now inhale with your shoulders held back. Change direction. Exhale when your shoulders come forward. Now alternating sides, inhale on one side, exhale on the other. Stop on the exhale side. Now inhale on that side, reverse directions, exhale on the other side. Drop your chin onto your chest. Roll your head slowly to the side. Gently stretch out the muscles on the side of your neck. And roll down. Put the chin on the chest again. Roll up the other side. Gently stretch. And continue rotating slowly from side to side. And now bring your head upright. We'll place the hands on the hips. Inhale. Exhale. Turn your head to the side. Look behind you. Inhale. Come back to the front. Exhale. Turn the other way. Look behind. Inhale. Come back to the front. Try to keep your shoulders square to the front and do the turning in the neck. Exhale out. Inhale in. One more round. And now step out to a little wider than shoulder width stance and we'll start horizontal circles. Coordinate with the breathing. Inhale when your lower abdomen goes backwards. Exhale when it comes forwards. Inhale and exhale. The head stays relatively stable, and we do the circling in the waist and hips. Gradually turn to the side while keeping your knees straight ahead. Cool. 
gradually come back to center and turn to the other side. And come back to center and reverse directions. Continue to coordinate with your breathing. Continue to focus your mind on the lower spine and sacrum. Turn slowly to the side. Gradually come back to center and turn to the other side. Come back to center. Slowly make the circle smaller, and we'll come to a stop, and now we'll wave the spine, working first on the lumbar section, coordinating with the breathing. We inhale here, exhale here. Focus your mind on your lumbar spine. Try to feel the vertebrae moving section by section in a slow, soft wave. Don't let your head drop too far down, so keep the head up here. Don't let it drop down there. Turn slowly to the side, keeping knees straight ahead, of course. Gradually come back to center and turn to the other side. Come back to the center. Now bring the wave up to the shoulders. Continue to coordinate with your breathing. Inhale here. Exhale here. Inhale. And exhale. Focus your mind on feeling your entire body connected as the wave starts in the bottoms of your feet and moves up your body section by section slowly and softly.
Turn slowly to the side. Gradually come back to center and turn to the other side. Come back to center, and now we'll add the arms. The arms become an extension of the wave. And we have the whole body moving like a slow, soft whip. Everything connected from the bottoms of the feet to the tips of the fingers. And turn slowly to the side. Gradually come back to center and turn to the other side. Come back to center. Now one arm at a time. And the other arm. All right, and that concludes our warm-up for Tai Chi Ball. And now we'll do a review of the Qigong breathing culminating in Tai Chi Ball breathing. So, whenever we have intention to move our Qi strongly in Qigong or Tai Chi, we use reverse abdominal breathing. So our foundation is reverse breathing, or also called Taoist breathing. As we inhale, we gently pull in the lower abdomen and gently lift the perineum. And as we exhale, we gently push out on the lower abdomen and gently push down on the perineum. Perineum or pelvic floor, it's the same area controlled by the muscles that control the anus. If you're beginning training with reverse breathing, keep the movements uh, small and confined to the lower abdomen. As you become more comfortable, you can gradually make the, uh, the movements larger. We want to avoid creating tension uh, right here and the area right below the diaphragm. So we inhale, abdomen in, gently perineum, gently lift. 
And exhale, abdomen gently push out, perineum gently push down. Breathing is long, slow, deep and even, still relaxed. Do we inhale, abdomen in, perineum up. We exhale, abdomen gently push out, perineum gently push down. Now inhale, abdomen in, perineum up. Exhale, abdomen out, perineum down. And then continue for a minute or so with the reverse breathing. If your abdomen starts to feel warm, that's normal. And now we're going to take the first step in moving our chi. Continuing with reverse breathing, because we have intention to move our chi strongly, we're going to move the chi up and down the legs. This is called Yang Chuan breathing because of the points, uh, kidney one points called Yang Chuan, and the bottom of the feet. So as we inhale, we'll start with the mind in the lower dantian. Perineum up, abdomen in. As we exhale, we move our mind to underneath our feet. Imagine a foot or two or maybe even more, your mind feeling below your feet as you exhale, and abdomen gently out, perineum gently down, and imagine the feeling of the chi running down your legs and out into the earth. You inhale, mind in the lower dantian, the center of your lower abdomen, abdomen in, perineum up. Visualize that you're drawing earth chi up through the channels and vessels that run in your legs and into your lower dantian. So exhale, mind under the feet. Abdomen gently out, perineum gently down. Inhale, mind in the lower dantian. Abdomen gently in, perineum gently up. So exhale, your mind is where you want to lead the chi, which is under your feet, into the earth, abdomen gently out, perineum gently down. You might imagine that your feet are pressing into the earth, but it's just a thought. It's not meant to tense your muscles. As you inhale, you return your mind to the lower dantian, abdomen in, perineum up, and visualize or imagine that you're drawing earth chi up through your yang chuan gates in the bottoms of your feet and into your lower dantian. So exhale, mind under the feet, abdomen gently out, perineum gently down. Inhale, mind in the lower dantian, abdomen gently in, perineum gently up. 
continue at your own pace for a minute or two with Yang Chuan breathing. Yang Chuan breathing is good for regulating the chi and your organs below your diaphragm, for smoothing out chi circulation in the channels and vessels that run up and down your legs, and for strengthening your feeling of rootedness, that is, your connection to the earth. If your feet start to feel warm, that's natural. Sometimes your feet start to feel too warm. That could be because your shoes are blocking the transfer of chi out the bottoms of your feet, or you're not placing your mind deeply enough under the feet. Some people like to take their shoes off when they do Yang Chuan breathing. So there's no restriction in the flow of Qi from the feet to the earth. The best place to do the Yang Chuan breathing is outside, bare feet on bare earth. Well, you could have grass, bare feet on clean lawn or grass or sand. Of course, if we were outside right now, we'd be getting wet with the rain. I recommend people who have leg cramps or restless leg syndrome to try the Yang Chuan breathing and see if that will help. Now we'll move from Yang Chuan breathing to what's called four gates breathing. So two of those gates are the Yang Chuan gates in the bottoms of your feet. The other two gates will be the Lao Gong gates in the center of your palms. So now as you inhale, mind's in the Dantian. Imagine that you're drawing in earth chi through the palms and through your feet into the Dantian. As you exhale, Place your mind under your hands and feet. Perineum gently down, abdomen gently out, of course. You might imagine that your hands and feet are pressing into the earth, but that's only a thought. No muscle tension involved. Inhale, mind in the lower dantian. Breath and chi flowing in through the four gates into the lower dantian. Exhale, mind under the hands and feet, breath and chi flowing out. Through the hands and feet into the earth. Oh, by the way, I hope everybody has the tip of the tongue at the roof of the mouth. As always in Qigong, unless the instructions explicitly State otherwise, the tip of your tongue should be lightly touching the roof of your mouth. Continue at your own pace with four gates breathing. So when we add the Yang Chuan breathing, this is good for regulating the chi in the organs above the diaphragm. Also good for smoothing out chi circulation in the channels that run up and down the arm. So there's six channels in each arm. So as we use the mind to lead the chi here, 
we help to break up any chi stagnation in those channels. And Yang Chuan breathing is also useful for leading energy to the muscles of the arms to augment their power for martial applications, or I find it works very well for opening stuck jar lids. Any other task that requires strength of the arms. We have two more steps to get to Tai Chi ball breathing. I might have mentioned also uh, the Yang Chuan breathing can be done lying down. So the next step is grand circulation breathing, called martial grand circulation in this variation. And in this step, we're going to strengthen the flow of chi to the arms. There are vessels and channels that run up and down the legs that make the flow of chi to the legs fairly strong. But the flow of chi to the arms is more difficult <clears throat> and a narrower path. So to open the path of chi to the arms, as we inhale, when we get halfway uh, into our inhalation, we're going to squat down slightly. I'm going to exaggerate the movement so that you can see the movement. Like this. But the movement shouldn't be that big, it's just subtle. Squat down slightly, tuck the buttocks under, and flatten the lower back. This opens the Ming Men Gate. The Ming Men Gate is the second gate to the lower Dantian, the other one being on your front, the Yin Jiao on the conception vessel. Ming Men is on the governing vessel. When you tuck the buttocks under, you open the Ming Men gate more widely, and Qi can flow from the lower Dantian out through the Ming Men in addition to flowing out the front of the Yin Jiao point. <laughs> Ming Men is located between L2 and L3. So now inhale, mind in the lower Dantian. Halfway into your inhalation, squat down slightly, tuck the buttocks under. Move your mind to a point called Da Shui, point on the governing vessel. It's right below the bump that you have where your collarbone attaches to uh, the vertebrae. So put your mind in that point, Da Shui, and imagine drawing the chi up to Da Shui. Now as you exhale, it'll be the same as four gates breathing, mind under the hands and feet, Abdomen gently out, perineum gently down. You might imagine your hands and feet pressing into the earth. Inhale, mind in the lower dantian. Halfway into the inhalation, tuck your buttocks under, squat down slightly, move your mind to dashwe, right here. Finish your inhalation, imagining drawing chi up to dashwe. Exhale, mind under the hands and feet. Imagine your hands and feet pressing into the earth, but don't tense. Abdomen gently up, perineum gently down. Visualize breath and chi flowing out through the four gates. So inhale, mind in the lower dantian. Halfway into the inhalation, Tuck the buttocks under, squat down slightly, and move your mind to Dashwe. Exhale, mind under the hands and feet. Imagine your hands and feet pressing into the earth. Abdomen gently push out, perineum gently push down. So this is martial grand circulation. 
continue at your own pace. Marshall Grant circulation, as I mentioned, strengthens the flow of chi to the arms. So if that jar lid is really stuck tight, and you can use the Marshall cir Grant circulation and then twist it, or any task that requires arm strength. So for Tai Chi, it's used to strengthen the flow of Chi to the arms for martial power in strikes and locks. For Qi Gong, when we turn the palms to face each other and continue the grand circulation, we have accomplished Tai Chi ball breathing. So as you exhale, palms facing each other, place your mind between your palms, perineum gently down, abdomen gently out. Visualize breath and chi flowing down into your root and between your palms. As you inhale, mind's in the lower dantian. Imagine breath and chi flowing into the lower dantian from the four gates. And of course, the second half of the inhalation, your mind moves to dashwe. Now, if you're sensitive to the feeling of the chi, you may notice that as you exhale, your palms seem to be pushed apart by energy flowing out of them, creating a ball of energy between your palms. Now, if you're really sensitive to chi in your body, when you inhale, you will feel a ball of chi in the lower dantian that expands as you inhale and contracts as you exhale. So as you inhale, the inner ball expands. As you exhale, the outer ball expands. And now you have Tai Chi ball of no ball between your palms. You can do anything with your Tai Chi ball of no ball that you could do with a real ball, except drop it. <laughs> Well, your chi won't drop suddenly like a real ball would. But you can do circles. Notice as I'm doing this vertical circle that I inhale halfway into the inhalation, tuck the buttocks, move the mind to dashwe, finish the inhalation. Then I exhale. Mine's between the palms and under my feet. So inhale, tuck the buttocks under, move mine to dash way. Exhale, mind under hands and feet. What is this good for? This is really very, very good for improving the circulation of your chi, your internal vital energy. It's good for focusing the mind. Good for healing joints. Because you're moving the joints, you're leading energy to them, but there's no strain on them. There's no weight affecting them. I can do the horizontal circling. So you see as the ball comes in, I inhale, mind in the dantian, tuck buttocks under, mind moves to dash way. As the ball go out, I exhale, mind between the palms and under the feet.
if I change my stance to rocking, same thing as I inhale, buttocks tucked under, mind in the Dantian, then mind moves to Dashwe. Exhale, mind between the hands and under the feet. So this lends itself to the rocking position. Now, we'll finish with Tai Chi ball breathing. But we have this ball of chi between our hands, so we're not gonna just forget about it. What we're gonna do is make the movement smaller and smaller till we bring the palms into the lower abdomen and place them one on top the other in front of the lower Dantian. Now, the chi that was in our ball of no ball, we're going to draw into the Dantian by holding our mind in the center of the lower abdomen as we continue to inhale and exhale with reverse breathing. So our mind is staying steadily in the center. This will bring the chi from the palms into the lower Dantian where it can be stored. Alternatively, you could lead the chi to any part of the body that your hands can reach easily that you feel might need some chi healing. So you could do the liver. Uh, the knee would be a little bit difficult because of having to get, reach down farther, but the hip, certainly you could do. Uh, and... Uh, you can use that ball of chi to promote the healing. All right. So that's a quick review of qigong breathing. Now, each of those stages in the breathing has its own uses. So it's not like you, do, you would do yang chuan breathing in and out the bottoms of the feet and then move on to four gates breathing and discard yang chuan breathing as no longer necessary. It has its purposes, including mainly strengthening your connection to the earth, and so on. Uh, now, we pick up the ball. So in, in, uh, when we do complete Tai Chi ball, that is, we have the movements with the ball and we have the internal movement of chi through Tai Chi ball breathing. That's the complete Tai Chi ball. And you can, when you have a wooden ball, you can send the chi through the ball. So the chi that you're uh, leading uh, to between your palms will actually throw, flow through the ball. Um, now this ball has a coating of varnish or something on it, which impedes a little bit. If the ball is unfinished, it's uh, best conductive of the chi. If you have a rubber ball, you'll feel the chi bounce back at you because it'll bounce off the surface of the rubber. It will not absorb it. It will not absorb the chi. So now when we start the physical movements, naturally what happens in the, in the beginning learning Tai Chi ball, the Tai Chi ball breathing drops by the wayside because you're concentrating on the physical movement till you learn and get those physical movements in muscle memory. That's natural. You could do Tai Chi ball breathing, standing still or doing simple movements by itself without the ball. Uh, to keep it going. Eventually, you'll get comfortable with the physical movements with the ball, and you'll remarry Tai Chi ball breathing and Tai Chi ball movements together. The best path for the chi through the ball is with the grain. So that my, the grain of this ball runs this way, so this way. When you get to be a Jedi, you can turn the grain so it runs the other way 
and it makes it a little harder to pass the chi through the ball. But you challenge yourself, you can still do it. Okay, so uh, let's start with some rocking. If we put left foot forward, we still have the inner ball. Remember, the inner ball leads the outer ball. Put the outer ball and inner ball kind of side by side down here, and we'll start rocking. Gradually expand the size of the movements. Inhale here, of course. Exhale here. Knees bending in the same direction that the toes on the corresponding foot are pointing. Remember that the ball doesn't go higher than top edge of the ball level with your nose and not lower than you can hold the ball without locking your elbows, okay? Mm -hmm. Inhale, notice that I'm tucking the buttocks under and now exhale, I'm on tucking. So. <laughs> Uh, those who were here last week saw that we can change the movement, uh, the, the movement of the ball, by going through the center of the circle. So if I'm shifting my weight forward, I'll go from the back of the circle to the front of the circle, and I can change to vertical circling underhand. I want to change back to overhand. I can go through the back of the circle to the front, or I can go from the front of the circle to the back. So I just have to coordinate with my weight shift. So I can go from the front of the circle to the back as I shift my weight back, and change back to overhand vertical circling. The key, as you may remember from last week, is that the ball doesn't stop. The momentum is preserved. It's continuous circular movement, even though the circle may seem very small. It's still continuous movement. You could do a figure eight if you wanted to do a figure eight and change every time the ball comes to the middle of the circle, like this. Okay, so now let's uh, give the body uh, equal uh, treatment here and put the other foot forward. So if you were doing what I was doing, this time we'll put the right foot forward and let's rock on the right side. Remember that uh, there are uh, a number of different goals in Tai Chi Ball, uh, one of which is healing of the joints and tend muscles and tendons that may have arthritis or strain or soreness. In, that, in those cases, you want to use a light ball because if you uh, hark back to the Tai Chi Ball breathing instruction of a few minutes ago, the heavier the ball, the more your muscles will tend to tense up. And when the muscles tense up, that inhibits the flow of chi. So to heal joints, muscles, or tendons, you want to lead the chi to them through Tai Chi ball breathing. So you'd want to use a light ball. So your muscles remain relaxed. Another goal with Tai Chi ball would be toning up the muscles. I'm going to change to underhand. So that, you would use a heavier ball or gradually work up to a heavier ball. Ideally, you would not use a ball that's so heavy that makes your muscles lock up. So you can still do the Tai Chi ball breathing, which will help 
muscle tone and growth. So now in addition to the uh, plumb vertical plane, of course we also have the horizontal plane. And we can be creative with the plane of the ball circle by doing things like having the ball move on a plane that is hip and shoulder, hip and shoulder. Now for Tai Chi practitioners, this training particularly useful for absorbing and redirecting an opponent's energy and returning the opponent's energy back to them. <laughs> which is usually something the opponent doesn't expect, but different directions of returning the opponent's energy. Now I'm gonna go back to plumb vertical, which is straight up and down, and now I'm gonna do the other shoulder and hip. Now, if you were working on strengthening your body or toning your muscles, notice the advantage this has. So your muscles are being used in a little bit different way if you slant this way, but there's no impact. There's no jerking. There's no stop and go. So you're not, if you were lifting dumbbells, it would be like this, stop and go, stop and go, jerking around. This continuous circular movement, very smooth. Now, I'm going to change the plane of the ball circle to being perpendicular to the direction that I'm rocking. So I'm rocking this way, but I'm going to circle the ball this way. Okay. I'm going to send the ball out as I rock forward and bring the ball in as I rock backwards. One thing I have to be careful of is my knee, particularly the front knee. I do not want my knee to rock side to side. I want my knee to stay straight forward and backward. So I have to do the turning in the waist and hips. So exhale out, inhale in. I rock forward, I send the ball out. I rock back, I send the ball back in. Okay. Let's change legs and do that on the other side for the sake of even treatment of the body. So we did shoulder and hip. And we did the other shoulder and hip. Now same leg forward. We're just changing the angle of the ball, the plane of the ball circling. And we did turn the ball to the side with the knee staying straight ahead Turning done in the waist. Exhale out and shifting forward. Inhale in and shifting back.
So remember, eventually, when you get very comfortable with these movements, then you'll want to reincorporate Tai Chi ball breathing. In the meantime, do the Tai Chi ball breathing separately with little or no movement of the, uh, the ball of no ball, the energy ball, okay? Just the breathing part. Okay, and we're gonna step back to even stance and gradually make the circle smaller. And bring the inner ball and outer ball to rest. Well, side by side, sort of, right here, in front of the lower Dantian. Questions? I need to make sure I can hear the Zoom audience with my computer. Oh, yes, I should be. Any questions? So this is, this is a great exercise. It's a low impact and very gentle. Um, just remember, uh, use the right weight ball for what your goals are when you do the Tai Chi ball. Yeah. And for healing arthritis, then the plastic or rubber balls are fine. Uh, the hollow uh, plastic or rubber, um, you can just do the exercises like, for, remember the uh, rotating, so for wrists and shoulders, it's very good. If you have a plastic ball that has no weight, that is really good for the healing of the joints. And also, if you can get the Tai Chi ball breathing included in your movements, that will boost the healing effect because be leading Chi to the uh, uh, sore or injured joints. Well, I thank everyone for tuning in today and uh, hope to see you again on uh, Wednesday or next uh, um, Saturday. And uh, gradually, well, I'm getting the hang of the technology and uh, uh, upgrade, made a few upgrades to add uh, hopefully better quality to the sound and uh, the, uh, the visual. So, uh, I think we're getting there where we begin to know what we're doing. <laughs> Have a great rest of your weekend. Stay safe and well. And uh, 